Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101, and you might be looking at all this white stuff around me and thinking I'm about to start complaining. So I got about uh, 10, 11 inches as it is right now, it's still coming down. However, I'm not complaining. Why? Because it's 30 degrees out. And that feels like Florida compared to the crap we've had in the last week. So here we are. I got a new sheath to show you today. I haven't shown a sheath from this maker in quite some time and this is a lot different from what he made me before. It is by Justin Wolf of Wolf Customs and it is for my LT Wright GNS. Now I specifically got the GNS because uh, LT Wright is one of the two custom makers that I've decided on my own to throw my weight behind. Him and Pete from Dark Timber. They're just the two that I like. So I wanted a good fixed blade for EDC because I can get away with it here in Ohio. Nobody cares. It's legal. Uh, I just like having it. And the GNS is like one of my favorite semi-custom knives that I've ever handled. So I wanted something really, really good for it and I went to Justin. So what he came up with for me, Justin is primarily a leather guy but he has begun dabbling in some kydex so i wanted a kydex leather hybrid sheath that could also be converted to regular from regular belt carry to a dangler so we've got a removable dangler loop here which works really well and if i'm not using it for the knife i could still have this on my belt and hook other things to it it has a kydex front with a thick leather backing got his logo there right in the right in the back has a leather fire steel loop excellent retention now he my hats off to him for figuring this out because knives like this don't have a whole lot to grip onto for normal kydexing so he had to mess around with this and find something that worked good that wasn't too tight but had excellent retention so what he came up with for me here is just outstanding i love this sheath it's great it's everything that i was hoping he would come up with when i got this knife because as soon as i got this knife and you i don't know that you've seen this yet it's unless you follow me on the other social media but as soon as I got this knife, I waited a little bit extra so I could get the polished black micarta handles. As soon as I got this knife, I wanted a special sheath for it. Because this knife, I love this freaking knife. Love it. Love it. Uh, definitely a Jessica List knife. Even though it's not Jessica. Haven't named it yet, but it's an awesome knife. It just feels so good in the hand. It's got that... Saber ground, 01 tool steel, the 90 degree spine. Awesome. We'll come back that, to that in a minute. But what can I say about this? I've never seen anything out of Justin that wasn't top notch. Matter of fact, I've got another knife that's going to be a very special knife. Uh, it's not going to be user because it's just it's too nice, too symbolic. I've got a colorized Jessica coming back to me, the probably the most customized Becker I've ever seen. And it's just too nice to use. It's too nice for Kydex. So it's, I just told, uh, the first person I thought of was Justin. It's like, look, I need a simple leather sheath for this thing. So when I, that gets back to me, then you'll get a glimpse of it. But until then, this is my EDC fixed blade right here. I mean, Justin Wolf and LT Wright are like the peanut butter and jelly of bushcraft. Or the Reese's peanut butter cups of bushcraft. It just, it, they're a perfect match. Per, you know, an outstanding knife, outstanding sheath systems. So, you can find Justin at wolfcustoms.com. Uh, and also you should also sub him on YouTube because he makes great videos too and uh, that channel is Greer Wolf he's been on my channel before he'll probably be on my channel again so if I think enough of somebody to let him on my channel and do their own videos it's definitely worth your time to sub them in their channel and if you want some sort of custom leather sheath for that 
one knife that's really, really nice for you, highly suggest checking out Justin. He does great work and he's timely. I've dealt with other leather sheath makers in the past, like pre-YouTube for me. But some of them, just the wait times to get the knife are just absolutely freaking ridiculous. That's one thing I like about Justin is he gets it done in a really reasonable amount of time. But this one, cannot say enough good things about it. So, getting back to the knives. The GNS. I wanted something to go along with this GNS. Uh, that would be, this is kind of a system for me. I've got different knives for different tastes, different knives for different uses. Depends on what I'm doing is what I'm going to carry. I don't have a one knife. It's like I always use this one knife. Although this is going to be my, at least for now, this is my one knife for EDC. Got something else in the works, but that's kind of a secret right now. So what I got to go with it is an LT Wright Great Plainsman. Now you may have seen the Great Plainsman recently if you watched my video on the Condor Mini Bush Lore. That is the knife that Will has around his neck most times. It has the orange handle. Well, I wanted one with the black handle to go with my GNS. And let me tell you something, for a four finger knife, as Will, Will would call it a patch knife, goes nice on your belt, but it's not too big for hanging around your neck. This thing is freaking awesome. Now this one isn't 01 tool steel. This one is actually D2. But what I love about it, besides the fact that D2 has excellent, excellent corrosion resistance and edge holding capability, is that you can easily get all four fingers are on this handle and then that little bump right there on the top of the blade that just locks your hand in for cutting. I was able to get the, I mean this thing came super sharp, but I did a couple swipes on a ceramic rod with it. I don't want to work sharp this one. Uh, I'm afraid I'll take too much metal off, but I just did some ceramic and leather stropping and this thing is ridiculously sharp. So I just, I haven't been able to put this thing down since I got it the other day. It's great edge, just an awesome feel. Now people are wondering how much these cost. Again, I, I review stuff from all different price brackets on this channel. But from what I saw, oh, I'm blanking right now. I wanna say this, uh, a GNS Sabre Ground, and you can get this in Scandi too, if you're more of a Scandi person. These run about 155, generally speaking. And then I believe this one was about, it was either 115 or 119, I forget which. But I'll put links in the description box below to LT's site. But the two of them together, just an outstanding combination. Now I don't always wanna carry this one around my neck. It kinda depends on where I'm at, what I'm doing. But this is not too big to go in my front pants pocket. So the way I've got this adjustable neck lanyard on here, I can actually cinch it up a little bit loop it under my belt, put the sheath through the loop, and then put it in my pocket. So it's nice and secure. It's, it looks like it'd be big for your front pocket, but every, all the pants I've tried it on so far, it's fine. So it's just an, I, I don't know, I might do, I might have an, a Kydex Necker sheath made for this just as an option. But for right now, the leather sheath that it comes with, plenty nice so probably just going to keep it as is for now so there you go as far as these two th these knives and these sheaths lt Wright, justin wolf they just go great together but what about uh let's take a quick look at this knife i got some uh some white birch out here to show you something else unrelated that just came in. I got so many different things that I'm sitting on right now. A huge pile of gear, uh, things to test, things to try out. But here is something that I picked up specifically if I'm out in the woods and I'm carrying like these two knives because I'm not carrying a really big knife. And although this could handle, handle batoning, 
I don't necessarily want to do batoning with this knife. I want to do that with some of my bigger ones. So let me show you what I came up with. So lately in the Facebook group, Meeting of the Prepared Minds, there's been several threads uh, debating the merits of batoning with a knife. Some people are really adamant about never batoning with a knife. Other people say, well, if your knife can't baton, then you don't have a good enough knife. I kind of am in the middle. Really depends on the knife uh, and how many knives I have, how many tools I have, because I don't, I'm not like a one system guy. I try all these different things. But let's say I've got something like my nice LT Wright, which can handle it, but it's really not that big. Maybe I want to be able to process other things and not worry about doing any kind of damage or putting any kind of stress on my primary cutting tool. So I've been looking at this for a while, trying to decide, but it wasn't until Gerber came out with the snowplow. It's not until Gerber came out with the updated version of this that I was actually interested in. And that is the, uh, the Backpacks 2. Now I'm sure some of you have seen this before, and some people might say, Oh, well, that thing's stupid because you can't, you don't have any leverage for chopping and all this stuff. Well, I wouldn't use this for chopping down a tree. To me, this is a wood crafting, primarily a wood processing tool, something that I would use to save my primary blade. And the new ones come with, it still has that kind of suitcase carry thing, but now they come with this edge guard with a shock cord. So that to me, that's what sold me on this. I think I want to. I want to say I paid about 40 bucks for this on Amazon, and just so everybody, it's going to be talked about in the comments section. Yes, it says Gerber on it, but Fiskars manufactures these for Gerber. This is a very lightweight tool. It took a razor sharp edge very easily, and the profile of that head is just perfect for splitting processing small things and and just batoning that's what I got it for that's what I wanted to test it out on so maybe you have I'll give you a couple examples maybe you got a really nice knife you don't want to beat on maybe you got a smaller knife with you or maybe you're on a budget and your primary knife is maybe a Schrade that is HCR 13 MOV which normally can baton but there is a higher risk I talked about that in another video of a possible breakage if you baton using 8CR as opposed to a high carbon steel like 1095 so you could have something like this and use this to split your wood so I haven't tried this out yet and in case you didn't notice I put some Wilson wrap on it and it just feels awesome I mean it's, it doesn't feel like I'm ever gonna have an issue with this it really feels good so let's uh got some firewood right here let's try it out now since I got this specifically for batoning that's what we're going to try and do with it just with some firewood that I happen to have so I have not used this tool yet been looking for an opportunity course I can just put it on the ground and split so if you want to process some kindling you don't want to mess up your primary blade this is absolutely not heavy at all so even with a light piece of wood as a baton the sharp edge, the profile, this is split and kindling, absolutely no problem. And, and I mean, yeah, this is seasoned firewood. You know, sometimes I would, I might carry just a little bit of that in my pack, it's not too heavy, just to process it down later, like something this big. I mean, wouldn't you feel better about using something like this? for all your little batoning tasks instead of using your nice primary knife. 
I mean, you gotta, got, you guys gotta let go of the rules sometimes. Oh, well, your knife should be able to this and should that. Just think outside the box. Try some different things. This takes, this is light. And it, you know, there's a lot of people out there that swear by Fisker's axes, like the X7. But to me, this is even more handy. Okay, so got all the splitting done with the axe. Let's get our GNS out here. And this is making extremely fine feathers. If I can just keep them on. This is an awesome feather sticking knife. Okay, right off the bat, this is not a proper fire lay or anything like that. I'm not trying to make a sustainable fire. Just wanted to do some feather sticking tests with the GNS. You can see some of these fine feathers this thing did. Now, testing out the 90 degree spine. I know this works. Figure we're, I might as well just aim it at there and see if it. Oh, what well, do you know? So, just with that right there. able to get something going this uh, white birch firewood I picked up at Home Depot uh, just to mess around with and uh, test some things putting a piece of this in your kit might not be a bad idea just so you can when you need to process it down for kindling get a fire started a little piece of fat wood and then that'll help dry out all that uh, stuff you collected but that's all right there from processing the wood with that that small Gerber axe, the backpacks too, and the GNS. But I had some other things I wanted to show you too. Bonus segment number one. Despite the fact that this probably looks like crap now because it's out here getting snowed on and the temperature is rising just enough to where stuff is falling off the tree and getting everything soaking wet a long time ago well last summer i did a review on the hidden woodsman haversack malcolm coderre who is also an admin in meeting of the prepared minds awesome awesome haversack custom nylon gear uh, made in the usa everything you could hope for so many people ordered haversacks off that video that he was able to take the money that he made, reinvest it into his business and get better equipment, uh, more industrial strength, sewing machines, so on and so forth. So not long ago, prior to SHOT Show, I asked for a new haversack. I wanted it to look a little bit more urban, less woodsy because I plan on carting this thing around town. So he made me a one of a kind, which I don't care. If you like this design, it doesn't need to be just mine. But he doesn't normally stock this webbing, so he'd have to order it. He's got Cryptek Typhon webbing. And he's added Molly Pals webbing to, you know, it may not be actual Pals webbing because, you know, that's copyrighted stuff or whatever, patented. But you can attach Molly pouches to the side. Still has the axe hatchet sleeve on the back. And what's really nice about this one is it has high visibility interior. So I can find what I'm looking for. Got his little logo patch there. And one thing you might notice if you go back and look at my original video, there was a couple of crappy comments where it's like that stitching looks kind of sloppy and 
blah 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 where he was still pretty new at it but now that he's got the new equipment and the sewing machines and all that look how nice and well done all this stitching is on this haversack so you want to support somebody that making stuff in the USA small business small craftsman somebody that definitely supports this channel he supports will uh, all these different uh, friend channels that we have and he's an all-around good guy definitely check out the hidden woodsman and I got the uh, got his website right there on the screen these haversacks are really popular especially like having the morale patch on, uh, velcro on here this is what I was carting a lot of my stuff around at SHOT Show and a lot of people are asking about the bag they're like wow what is that th where's that bag where'd you get it from so just gave him the information but he's definitely gotten better he's making more things he's making packs and all sorts of stuff so if you want something made in USA handcrafted definitely check him out cannot recommend him enough One last bonus for you today. I'm doing these bonuses because I just have so much stuff that I got to cover. I got to get under, out from underneath this pile. Uh, I'm not testing this right here today. I don't have the stuff that I need, you know, big wood and all this. But since I had it out, I wanted to at least show it to you. This is a new tray design. This is the SCHF 48. You will have only seen this if you follow me on Facebook and Instagram because it's not out anywhere else. I didn't even know this was coming. What happened was Schrade, they know how hard I test their stuff and I always give them feedback. So they sent me three of these things all in different steel. Blind test. I don't know which one is which. Only they do. They're marked. So. I'm supposed to go out and beat on these things and give them feedback on which ones I think work the best. But this was so interesting, I had to show it to the people on YouTube that don't do the social media stuff. It's kind of like a large Kukri-esque design. I will say it's got the same handle as, I forget, it's that large recurve chopper thing that I reviewed. I wasn't that into that one. But I did like the handle. It's got the exact same handle. It does have a choil, which I don't personally think is all that useful as far as choking up because it's got the, the puts the hump right there, right in your hand. But holding it like this for something, maybe it feels good. Good forward weighted balance. It feels like it's going to. Because one thing about this is the hollow grind. Hollow grinds chop like beavers on meth. If you've, I never showed it on Prepare My 101 because I had traded it off before I started the channel. But I used to have a K-Bar pot belly. And that, that one was named Woody Woodwrecker because that thing just demolished anything that you hit with it. Hollow grinds are great for chopping. So the fact that this has that forward weighted blade in a hollow grind makes me really excited to test this thing out. And of course, I'm going to try and figure out which one's the carbon steel, you know, so yeah, that one's the best one. But I don't know. I honestly do not. There may not be any carbon steel in there. So I need to get out in the woods. I need to get some just heavy logs and go, you know, do the whole we all juggle knives, stump a truth thing and just whale away with this thing but this is the one that i can show you they have another one if this is the 48 it might be the 49 uh it's still in the secret phase but i saw it and it's looks pretty cool too it's a big one i don't know if they saw my jessica x and saw the feedback on that and they're like hmm, maybe we should make some big stuff but i definitely like this i definitely like where they're going is this a survival knife? Is it something that, you know, you need this to go out in the woods? I wouldn't say so. I would say this is for knife lovers. I don't know what it's going to be good at yet, other than just plain old chopping because I haven't taken it out. But I was doing something with it. I had the camera out. I figured I'd at least give you a little teaser of something that is coming for those of you that may be interested in. So there you go. That's just one extra little bonus for you. All right, guys. Uh... I'm pretty much soaked from all this wet snow. 
I got my camera covered up with a rag. Time to get inside and edit all this footage. I'll be back with some more videos here soon, so see you then. All right, well, I got this one little piece of wood right here, so, you know, let's get something out of it. Definitely has a good feel to it. Yeah, I don't care if I smack it on the stone. I'm supposed to hard use test it, right? Any other big pieces? It's not exactly what I would call hard test, but I hit that uh, hit that stone a couple times. This is going to be fun to test. Stay tuned. <laughs> 